good evening, everybody. Uh, thanks for uh, putting up for a longer day and uh, sustaining for last uh, three days. So really appreciate it. And uh, I won't take too much of your time. Um, I just wanted to take a few of our take on uh, this topic, what was uh, given to me for telemedicine and telehealth. Uh, as most of you might have aware, uh, during the last two years uh, about this telemedicine side of it and telehealth, how advancements has been uh, happened and uh, what sort of the uh, benefits and things, you know, uh, it has provided to the public during this pandemic. So just before I take on to uh, specific on the topic side of it, uh, so let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is Dr. Sona Raja. I'm the director of uh, ProRelix Research, which is a clinical research organization uh, based out in Boston in US and in uh, Pune, India. Uh, we provide end-to-end -end clinical research services for biotech, pharma, uh, herbal, nutraceutical, medical devices company to bring out their clinical products into the market through various phases of clinical trials. So uh, the name of a clinical uh, research company, ProRelix Research, as uh, it's prompt, ethical, and uh, um, reliable and ethical. And also, as mentioned, you know, we provide end-to-end -end clinical research services for um, all different stakeholders in the uh, global industry. Uh, so what is telemedicine? So as many of you are already aware, uh, you know, it is a um, service that provides um, to the patient improvement of the patient care, providing permitting uh, two-way communication between the consultant and the uh, uh, patient directly themselves. So to, just to make sure the real-time communication happens between those two uh, parties, um, which was always happens during your face-to-face -face consultation, but how to make sure that you know when you are distancing yourself and require such a consultation during this uh, time of uh, need, what we had recently in the last two years or so. So uh, COVID pandemic had uh, given that um, a big kind of uh, a blow on everybody to make a think of it in you know, how this technology could be used for real-time communication. So uh, I don't know how many of you had that kind of like instances, but in my own family, um, we had a situation where uh, family members were admitted to the hospital or someone sitting at the home who had been affected with the COVID, doesn't know where to go, not allowed to go out anywhere. And uh, you're just kind of like being left out in your own devices and deal with it. You know, so such a time, these things, you know, had come up into light and uh, really had moved the people to see how these things have moved on and how the people have come forward with those kind of like consultations and uh, providing the support what they require. Because that the best you could do for those people, those who are in require uh, some kind of consultation or a consolation during that time, you know, a word from the dedicated medical qualified person the other end who gives you the confidence to say you're fine. You don't have to worry too much. Just take what is required to keep yourself active and move and take your uh, fluids and things. You know, it's just basic things, but still it matters if you come from the right person at the right time. You know, you do so many things for your family, but when it comes from the uh, professional, it matters. And that is exactly what it is. And when it comes to this telehealth side of it, it is not just a consultation, but it kind of like a one step above, which allows you, the technology allows to do a health assessment remotely through the diagnostic devices, which can allow them to uh, get the required reports from the devices that they are currently using. And um, as I mentioned, it's, again, it provides that opportunity for the consultant to provide the consultancy as well as the supervision and uh, and uh, treatment what is required from the distance. So the evolution of this telehealth or telemedicine, you know, where we have been and where we are going ahead. So, I mean, I don't know how many of you uh, know about this one, but again, it's, it's mostly uh, people might be thinking, you know, it's a recent thing, but it's been there for ages, I mean, 18, precisely in you know, 1857 was the first time it was being used on a telephonic way of doing the consultation. I didn't believe when I first looked at it, I said, seriously, about 150 years ago, these things were existing. 
and now we are talking about the technology advancement. That technology advancement has enhanced the uh, details, what we get through. But the basic fundamental thing, you know, it was existing and it has been kind of like used for the need what it was at that time. And, uh, and again, it was in, uh, featured in the one of the radio news magazine in 1924, saying you know, how this model, what we are looking at the bottom here, it is exactly what we are working on right now. Like if someone sitting at the home needed a hospital environment where all the consultation, all the diagnosis, everything happens at the doorstep, don't have to go out anyway, this was being envisaged at the time of 1924 by an editor. So it was an editorial thing, but that has been brought into the reality after 90 years of the journey. Uh, it's quite a, uh, a lengthy slide, but uh, to cut short things, you know, uh, it, the basic uh, essence of this one, you know, as I mentioned, it was being used in various different global regions, Korea, um, in uh, NASA as well, uh, for various different kind of needs they uh, had it at the time, uh, especially to pass the data, health-related data, between various different departments. And where are we now? Um, as research has been done over the, because the basic requirement for this one, you know, the internet usage and the technology-based devices to be used for collection of the data and share the data with the other um, body where you can get that uh, consultation or the review by the uh, real-time uh, communication. So, um, which allows the recent advancement in terms of getting the uh, people, how many people have been using it. You know, more and more people are techy uh, or savvy or they kind of like want to use the technologies. So where are we actually now? So during the pandemic, if you see, you know, uh, back in uh, January 2021 or April 2022, the overview of global internet usage was humongous. I mean, you can see, you know, there's about 60% uh, of them were using uh, the global population using internet. And uh, which shows that, you know, people are capable and people are having that handheld devices that could be used for various different purposes, what we look for the health uh, care related benefits. And uh, also the percentage of users through the mobile devices is the main catch of my eye is 92.8 percentage of the people. So it's almost close to everyone across would be using a devices in their handheld devices, using mobiles for various internet users. So why can't you use that one for the health benefit side of it? So what does the health, telehealth would do in terms of the clinical application side of it? So, I mean, I'm not gonna to say too much because the people outside those who have the stars, you know, they already have given you more thought on these things. Uh, but just uh, to take you through, uh, the more for major clinical applications, if you take it, it's a real-time interactive mode. The next one is the store and forward mode. So when I say real-time interactive mode, it's, as I mentioned, if someone who is on the other end wanted to have some kind of input from, say, a nurse or a technician or the consultant, it would be possible to have the real-time conversation. And store and forward, it's, through the devices to capture the data and forward the data. So you store it and you forward it for your analysis purpose. And remote monitoring, um, again, it would allow someone to look at it and uh, to do the, uh, for instance, for the remote monitoring and communication, you can see uh, there are devices available which can capture your arrhythmic data, a cardiac arrhythmia, and uh, also the, uh, the, the patient records, you know, could be checked. Uh, virtually or the remotely, and ease of communication as well. So here I mentioned telephone, but mostly it could be done within that app what we already hold. So what does it do in terms of the benefits? So the convenience at home, cost savings, improved access to care, and uh, multidisciplinary visits could happen within that same uh, uh, tablet form. And uh, also infection control, you don't have to go to the hospital. Uh, improved diagnostic treatment and triage services, so you don't have to go wait for your uh, turn to go and uh, see the uh, consultant. But as the barriers, you know, it is the mindset of the clinicians and the organization willingness, the reimbursement side of it as well. You're not gonna get paid as you much you get paid when you go and see the doctor. So that is one of the thing. And security side of it is also because the data is gonna be transferred over. 
and, uh, and training on licenses as well. So what do you require for telehealth? Infrastructure, cost and reimbursement, and uh, human factors and equipment and technology issues. So these are very uh, fundamental things you know, require for a digital future. So as I mentioned, you know, my core domain is in the clinical trials. So um, how do we use this digitalization during this pandemic? You know, it has given a very um, deep thought into it. Uh, though the virtual trials were being in the discussion for a longer time, but it wasn't come on to the real picture until that pandemic situation happened where no one was allowed to go out. And literally, we can't halt all the study what was running at that time. So we have to find a solution which could take us through and move forward. And also running the trials what we had that time. So basically what it does is, you know, it is a pretty much the same digital technology we use for engagement purpose and keeping up the patient engagement, also recruitment and make sure the health data, whatever is retrieved by them, it's been useful for digital analytics side. So what does it do? It allows us to do the recruitment in a faster manner and it's a hard to reach population, like someone is a very, uh, remotely staying, but it ha they have the specific conditions that we are looking for, but they can't travel. And uh, so those sort of people, you know, like for example, in the US, uh, we had a person who wanted to be part of the study, who was uh, completely, ex completely outside of the Texas, who can't really travel anywhere, and have, but shown interest, because having an interest of the patient to be participating in trial is a huge thing for us. So we assigned and we uh, provided the devices, what allows them to get engaged into the trial, and we made sure that you know, they get the supply of the uh, particular treatment at home doorstep, and the diagnostic sample is also collected from home as well. This is already covered. So as ProRelix Research, we sit in between all different stakeholders, uh, holding them together and uh, making sure the journey completes uh, as it stands for. And uh, so this is the uh, digital platform I was talking about, ProCTH, uh, which is having a chat feature. Uh, the patient would be get notified and uh, the si uh, simultaneously the consultants also would be notified if there are any alerts or any kind of like significant health needs of that patient is being uh, shown up in that data, it would be flagged up. And they get health tips as well, regular health tips. The patient get has regular health tips uh, either from the consultant or from the uh, AA model, what has already been uh, backed up with. And they get reminders because patient or anyone uh, you know, would require a reminder of their consultations or the appointment slot. So they get to know in advance and they get the alert to make themselves available for those visits. And there's a facility of either having a telephonic call or the video call, and all the devices or medical devices are connected to this software. So let's say if we have a, a, a stethoscope, or the arterial blood gas analysis, which has the Bluetooth enabled one, then this software could collect all the data for the analysis purpose. And making trial easy for the patient is the main motto behind this. So through this, you know, we can get any subjects from anywhere, flexible across all therapeutic areas, and the retention increases in compliance, and uh, remote patient visits also possible, and it's a completely regulatory compliance as well and real-time data, you're generating it, and it's available on any uh, Android devices that you hold. And you can tag the data as well. So together, we want to uh, revolutionize the uh, healthcare industry by stepping into this uh, new era of uh, clinical research by uh, having a great flow, patient sitting at the home and having a study team at one end, sponsor at the other end, study team in the other end, and doctors at the other end, and a mobile device which is connecting all of them together to provide the data what you require with the minimal travel, faster closeouts, and real-time analysis, and the mobile is allowing you to do everything. So this is what, what we believe. So interdependence is superior than dependence and independence. So really thank you for the time, and I uh, really appreciate. I know uh, people have uh, left, but any audience here, you know, the one limited one, if you have any questions, you know, I'm happy to answer. Thank you.